वन जीन एंड वन इंजाइम हाइपोथेसिस सो टूडे वी नो दैट वन जीन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर अ प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द वन इंजाइम और वन प्रोटीन सो दिस वन जीन वन इंजाइम हाइपोथेसिस वॉज फर्स्ट प्रपोज बाय इंग्लिश फिजिशियन आर्चिबाल गैरो इन नाइनटीन जीरो नाइन ही सजेस्टेड दैट इच इंजाइम और इच जीन कोड फॉर अ सिंगल स्पेसिफिक इंजाइम बट हिज वर्क वॉज अननोटिस इन हिज ओन टाइम बट इन द अर्ली नाइनटीन फोर्टीज टू साइंटिस्ट दैट इज चार्ज पीडल एंड एडवर्ड टैटम has rediscovered and appreciated the work of garrod by performing the series of experiment for this experiment they use a simple bread mold that is neurospora crassa and they cleared the connection between the genes and the metabolic enzyme neurospora crassa is a bread red mold it is widely used in a genetic as a model organism why widel and tatum use this mold because it quickly reproduces it is easy to culture and can survive on minimal media and it can reproduce by sexually as well as asexually asexually by conidia and sexually by ascospore according to this hypothesis one gene is responsible for the production of the one enzyme Neurospora crassa is a haploid organism means it has a single set of the gene now if there is a mutation takes place in the gene so that will change the structure of genes and uh, due to the mutation in the gene the proper enzyme will not form so neurospora crassa has the ability to grow in the complete medium as well as in a minimal medium which contain only salt but due to the mutation the ability of neurospora crassa to develop on the minimal medium will stop it on it only develop in the complete medium so let's see what the beetle and tatum has done in this experiment so wild type neuro neurospora crassa has the ability to grow on the minimal medium which contain the salts only so uh, the individual conidia is exposed to the x rays to form to to place the mutation in them conidia are the asexual haploid spores now this mutagenized spores are grown on the complete medium which contain the chnops salt as well as full range of the amino acid after that uh, bidel and tatum cross this mutagenized conidia with the wild type that is non mutagenized neurospora the diploid offspring then produces the haploid oscospore that haploid microscopic oscospore are dissected and transferred one by one to the culture tube so there are hundreds of tubes of complete medium are inoculated with the single oscospore complete medium containing the chnops salts plus variety of amino acid now uh, conidia from each culture are then tested in a minimal medium some colonies shows the growth and some colonies does not show any growth in ability to grow indicate that mutation affecting the ability to produce some critical growth sub substances that was induced in the parent spore by the x rays now returning to the culture b that shows no growth phenotype in the part c the individual haploid spores are grown on a minimal control then minimal plus amino acid minimal plus vitamin and the complete control medium so that mutant does not grow in a minimal control and minimal vitamin and but only grow in the minimal plus amino acid and the complete medium so it means that there is a uh, that mutant are unable to make a one or more amino acid so to find out which amino acid they are not able to make so there are different type of test tubes are taken which contain the minimal medium with the specific amino acid that is glycine alanine leucine isoleucine valine etc so after culturing in the variety of amino acid it is found that the mutant neurospora only grow in the minimal medium which contain the arginine it indicates that the mutation altered the ability of particular fungal strain to synthesize the arginine the strain will therefore be designated as the arginine negative to indicate the defect of arginine synthesis 
So in this way, the beetle and tatum link the many nutritional mutants to the specific amino acid biosynthetic pathway. Their work produced a revolution in the study of genetics and shows that individual gene were indeed connected to the specific gene. That is, gene is responsible for a synthesis of specific enzyme. Although the one gene one enzyme concept is not perfectly accurate, but its core idea that a gene typically specifies a protein in a one-to-one -one relationship remains helpful to geneticists today.